Oh no. Well, I don't think we were supposed to be seeing Burp today. Bun bun bun. No, true. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Cause and Effect, a, a campaign where the name will just get more and more apt in every episode. This is a homebrew Dungeons and Dragons campaign. My name is Crash. I'll be your DM for the evening tonight. I'm joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Beth, Ellie, Eo, Jen, and Matt. And what happened last time? There was time travel. Time travel I don't recommend was it. almost no, <laughs> almost never a good idea, except when it's vital, which it kind of was. So well. yeah, this is one of those times when it was vital. Well, that's your understanding. Everything was very confusing. There was a lot of detail that needed to be filled in that just wasn't. And a significant amount of that was by the DM's design, but that didn't make the feeling of, wait, what What are you saying? No, that's not how it... It didn't make that experience any better, I think. Which is kind of the mood I was going for, to be honest. Mission accomplished. But in a nutshell... The universe was being conquered. You, you went back in time to stop the big bad from becoming a big bad. In theory, from what little you were told by the quest giver, Jenny, was that you had to stop a coup on the moon run by kobolds. These are all words that make sense in context, but you didn't have all the context. Most of you still don't. You turned the kobolds, most of them, into wallpaper. Or paint. Paint. Yeah. Paint. Wore one of them as a jaunty hat. Stabbed one of I them mean... in the ankle until they died. Did a barrel roll until the rest of them were killed in a tumble cycle. Ex fixed two of them. Fixed two of them. One got away. The other one didn't know they were supposed to run and or weren't being let go by the five foot cat person. I'm used to saying seven foot tabaxi, but no, we don't have a seven foot tabaxi this time around. Right. Because... Yes. We have a short tabaxi. Yes. We started carrying the cobalt around like, you know, the, the kit under kitten, kitten under the, the arms and making sure that no one was going to execute this cobalt because it was promised. Cavill promised that one would be all right. And every time I hear the tabaxi say they're carrying the cobalt around like a cat. <laughs> uh oh, I just got that image. That's deliberate. Me. <laughs> Although if you if you were really carrying the kobold around like a cat, you would be holding it by the scruff of its neck in your mouth. Right. Well, you see, Hobby isn't carrying it like a cat carries. Hobby is carrying it like a child carries the cat under its arms, sort of dragging it along with, with its tail going along the, the floor. I said what I said. Indeed. <laughs> okay, so after... All of that fun. You crashed into the moon, leaving a very large swath of destruction because all of this was happening inside a cobalt spaceship, which I don't want to RP your characters, but it's quite possible that none of you ever want to use the words cobalt and spaceship together ever again. It's quite possible none of you wants to use the word cobalt ever again or the word spaceship ever again, but this is the life you have chosen. And by chosen, the spaceship I mean wasn't here. terrible. What's that? The spaceship right. wasn't terrible. Well, your experience in it wasn't ideal. It's not like it was exploding over a planet that you'd never explored before. That's a different group. Right. Yeah. And it's I not like, like Hoppy is the one who was in the bathroom. To try a helm again, I'd do a better job. Right. Well, all you need is a short rest and you could try it again. But you weren't given the opportunity because right after... You got out of the crashed ship. You were met by Monty, who is one of the higher ups of the Moon Kobolds. It never stops being weird when I say Moon Kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> and Monty suggested that you all have an amicable cup of coffee together and have a discussion. Valid. Uh, during the discussion, we're not going to RP that out uh, because this has already happened at the time that this game is starting. But during that discussion, you were basically asked, who are you? Where are you from? What's going on? A zone of truth may have been used during the discussion. A, which is the kobold who you decided to immediately adopt instead of murder, uh -huh. is taken away for separate discussions. With the assurance from Monty 
that they will not do summary execution. All the summary executions were already done by the party. Mostly the summary executions were done by time travel. Yes, and then a barrel roll finished it off. The barrel roll barrel was not was on hard. purpose. The second one was. Well, that was to make it go upright, so... Yes, this is true. However, you did not press the fasten seatbelt sign in the process and therefore can be held legally liable. It wasn't summary execution so much as summary vehicular manslaughter. Well, cobalt slaughter, but yes. Sapien slaughter. Yeah. So the people doing the interview also take Stonebrook's shiny new hat. Shiny because it's still slick with blood, apparently. There's only so much precipitation you can do. And apparently... Are you still wearing that? Well, he was. Oh. He took it off briefly to try to make a persuasion check against a kobold who just stood still until you did a jump scare on him, if I remember correctly. But the, he- the hat is taken for questioning because it's still got the majority of the brain in there and apparently there's some kobolds who are high enough level spellcaster to speak to the dead. The hat is not returned to Stonebrook. I, will I let think Tom I'm decide. glad. I will let Tom decide how he feels about that. Every now and then, this, the, uh, the understanding that this is all stuff that has happened at this point makes me smile and laugh. I will give myself inspiration. <laughs> now I'm worried. Yes. So they still don't know what to think of you as the party. They're pretty sure you're not lying, but they're not sure you're all sane. However, you're also a ragtag We've... band of adventurers. So this... I'm a some... warlock. I think I'm professionally discouraged from being sane. We all have a great deal of trauma from our homes and then our other homes and then our new homes after that being conquered by a bunch of implacable warforged. That too. It's not really great for our sanity. Right. It's well, not. it sounds like you do need to have some group therapy. I found it could be very useful. It's helped me deal with some anger issues. You'll note that none of you are blood smears right now. Thank you. We appreciate that greatly. Ah, yes. I appreciate that. I can be told that people appreciate it. I've calmed down a lot. (laughs) In any case, you can't stay here. Oh, we can't go home. It is not possible. That's true. However, based on what you've told me, and I asked between sessions if you were going to say everything, and more than one player was like, yeah, I'm not going to hold anything back. So you did say, hey, our next stop is to try to stop this thing called a singing monolith. Do you know of any, like, opera houses or something that have monoliths in them or anything or, or whatever? So, um, coincidentally, your next location, if you are continuing to do this thing you want to do, none of my business, is to go where we normally send people who we don't want on the moon anymore. It's a small island called Flotsam. Does it float? Mm. Is it made of Flotsam? Originally, probably, but they've become a bit more cosmopolitan over the past few years. Even had a children's theater. Had. Had? Well, there there was an incident with a different ragtag band of adventurers who were asked to leave in no uncertain terms, and after which there were a bunch of wards put up to keep people from just teleporting in whenever they felt like it. So you're not sending us there with teleportation? Uh, not only are we not, we can't. But we're still sending you there. Are you going to send us there on a cleaner one of those ships? Oh, no, we don't have any spare. We actually have one fewer to spare than we had before. We're at negative. Actually, it's not negative one. It's it's a larger negative number than that. Uh, we, We just got over some issues that I don't really want to waste the time talking about right now. Suffice to say, we have alternate means of propulsion. Right this way, and you All are right. led down. Are these alternate means of propulsion going to make us go splat? I have been told that the splats have not happened in quite some time. They took a medication. Excellent. Trip. That's all right, then. That's all right for you. You're the high-level warlock. I just have to land on my feet. <laughs> yeah, if you try this trip... Landing on your feet, you will find your feet are much closer to everything else on you. That was the problem, yes. Anyway, 
here we are. And you've gone down an underground <coughs> hallway to what appears to be a round room. Like you're inside one room that's mostly rectangular, but inside of it is a circular, basically a cylindrical room in the middle with a door on the side with a porthole on it. And Monty opens it up, and inside there's some padded chairs with belts on them going around the outer edges. You is want to there, strap yourselves in. Is there a parachute on the top of this thing? More than one, actually. The first three always rip off. They don't get... Maybe you could teleport us down close to the place, and we could walk there? Oh, Island. there will certainly be walking Island. involved. Hmm. Are we going Careful, into battle? are you getting... You hopefully will not. Am I getting what? Are you getting into this thing, Cavill? Of course. Uh, I have to go keep you out of trouble again. All right, following Cavill. All right, Mech walks in, finds a chair, straps in, nothing new. Okay. Another kobold comes in um, who looks somewhat bored, and they check all of the belts to make sure they're fastened properly just by giving them a couple tugs and then going to the next person, giving a couple tugs. Um, not all of you have fastened the belts on the same way. They don't seem to adjust anything. They're just tugging on the belts to see if they fall off, I guess. I'm just going to be hanging on with my claws, too. Did they ever give back poor A? Yeah, claws here. Not that I have very good claws, but, you know. Principle of thing. Dig your horns in. Did they give back A, or is A, um, gone off for questioning and hopefully not execution? Well, funny you should mention it, because the door does get closed, and Monty says, Right, have fun, enjoying gravity, and then a few seconds later, the door is opened again, and a much larger kobold tosses A in, A sort of bounce lands on one of the empty seats, and then the door is slammed shut, and Quick, you strap in. hear a locking me mechanism go into place. Oh, um, hmm. I strap in quick before it okay uh, a attempts to strap in as best as they can the dm is regretting not prepping the one thing that the dm should have prepped if only i had like 15 different ways of rolling random numbers <laughs> okay a is successfully strapped in a is currently sitting sideways in the chair but a is currently strapped in a I is clearly a neurodivergent Okay, make sure that there's padding under your head. Oh, um, A's head and tail are hanging off of opposite sides of this chair. Look, come over here and I'll strap you in one with my straps. No, no, oh, don't, okay. don't get them. To, don't unstrap okay. them. Don't have them unstrap. Don't unstrap. It, it's okay because okay. A can't find the buckles that A fastened. Somebody um, pull A upright. Don't the break chairs the are, poor little The deck. chairs are close enough that A's head is technically kind of sort of in Shadrick's lap. Valid. Hey. <laughs> I am absolutely sure that you're going to be all right. I give A a bardic inspiration, Di. Uh, thanks. But, um, the last time you tried to reassure me, the ship did a barrel roll and I died. We fixed you. And so did everyone I knew. Hmm. Why we are would... you with us? I am uh, confused. Politics, they said I probably. couldn't stay here. Okay. At that moment, you all feel like you have gained um, maybe eight, nine times your current weight. Oof. Oh, look, gravity. I would say that you were just tossed off the moon by the world's largest trebuchet, but that would imply that the trebuchet was on the world and not the moon. <laughs> Well, it might be the world's largest trebuchet, too, you know, comparatively. It is not of the world. It is of the moon. But no matter what... Accelerate! You have Fun been rapidly acceleration. <laughs> You achieved an escape velocity and were immediately, by your perspective, thousands of years later, and also immediately afterwards... Depends on, you know, time is relative. The worse an experience you're having, the longer time seems to go. So possibly thousands of years, possibly a millisecond. <laughs> Depends on if you're having fun. You're immediately captured by the circulating gravity well, which is just fine because, you know, you do want to land in circulus, not float in orbit forever. So this is a good thing. This is a it's positive change. 
Um, for a moment, you are weightless or feel weightless, and it feels pretty Whee! good, you know, after um, after being nine times your own weight, and then you feel that wonderful acceleration again. Only it's not as sudden. It's it's building up slowly, and is someone cooking something? You ha you smell a smell you normally only encounter when someone's you know got like a metal fireplace or something or stove re-entry and that um there's a lot of light coming through that porthole Woo! oh wait no no the lights the door the door is glowing did they forget to make the door properly um heat proof they shielded it just enough so you wouldn't burst into flames don't touch the door anyone it actually feels kind of comfortable in here temperature wise it's a shame we're going to Nice and warm. <laughs> and then the first parachute deploys, and you slow down just a little bit, and then you hear a tearing sound, and you're falling again. Then you, the second parachute deploys, and you slow down a bit more, and that starts to ease your worries a little bit, and then you hear a slow ripping sound as that parachute goes away. This happens about three or four times. They need then better parachutes. And then eventually there is a thud. And you are 45% sure you've stopped moving. <laughs> then the whole room falls on its side, and you're 100% sure it stopped moving. Oh, hey. Touchdown! So is I the only one who's sitting correctly now, or are they upside down? They're currently on what is now the floor. <laughs> Apparently, okay? they are snoring softly. How does one sleep through that? I do not sleep, so I do not know. They may have gotten knocked unconscious. Does that involve snoring? Maybe. Hmm. All right, checking everyone. Everyone in one piece? Yes. Well, yes. Seems that way. I don't want to repeat that trip. Hobby will unstrap. Do I have to cast prestidigitation on anything? Um, I will leave it to the players as to whether or not anyone voided any internal compartments on the way down. Maybe, maybe cool down the doors so that we can open it without burning our fingers. There is the pinging sound of metal cooling. What if we just kicked it open? I was about to say. I, you know what? Despite my resistance to fire damage, I'm going to let the people who are actively made of metal do this. <laughs> a wise decision. Thank you. Agree. There is a hissing sound and the door cools off to the point where it's no longer glowing. Well, that'll make it easier. Uh -huh. How big is this door? And big enough that the largest of you was able to enter by only ducking a little bit. Okay. It is not kobold scale. It is medium creature scale. Okay, so... It's almost as if most of the people that the kobolds went off the moon are not kobolds. Hmm. I mean, it would be very inconvenient if they want someone off the moon who wasn't a kobold and it wasn't big enough to get them off the moon, so... That only happened two or three times. Hmm. Obviously, this is doing double duty. And afterwards, That's what all the, the big kobolds straps on up. the floor are for. Well, that too. Um, mm. And after the last time that happened, every cobalt was picked up one after the other to see if they were, in fact, cobalts. That's true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, there is the sound of the locking mechanism being done in reverse, and the door opens, and a mushroom pops through the door. Huh. Hello. It blinks at you. I blink back. I look at Flashing Chatrick. <laughs> I know Chadrick's player isn't here, but given my experience with Chadrick so far, this sort of feels like his department. I do yes, not want yes, to it does. This character. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's fair. That's valid. It's yeah. It's. I, I, I was making we were... a joke about oh, yeah. mushrooms. I know. And... I know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um... Good. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> yes. Oh. I'm going to assume Chadrick has perhaps followed the example of the kobold. That is just shrugging. That or they have some concerns about party rocking a bit too hard if they're or seeing mushrooms. Seeing giant around. mushrooms, yeah. <laughs> you hear a voice say, you seem to have survived. That's good. 
We think so. Hi? Are you able to unfasten your belts? Should yeah. be. Poppy will unfasten the belt because okay. even if it, she's sideways, I mean, she's a cat. <laughs> sideways okay. is a temporary condition and also heavily dependent on what the cat says is sideways. I was going to say, sideways is a point of view. Exactly. Okay. Well, you are all and able to... And she can climb to... down off the ceiling. <laughs> You are all able to either unfasten yourselves or get unfastened, depending on situations, and find your way safely out of um, the landing capsule to find that you are in the middle of a farm field that is being tended by mushroom people. Several of the ones that are near you have empty buckets that apparently recently had water in them, which is how they were able to cool the door off so quickly. Uh, the water seems to have not been carried all the way here. There are uh, various um, canals that are moving water throughout the fields to irrigate everything. Thank you very much. Yes, we really appreciate it. It's fine. We understand the journey can be somewhat harrowing. Most of us encountered it ourselves. Oh, sorry to hear that. It is quite all right. I so is it common for people to be dropped here from the moon? Not so much anymore. We came down in the initial rush, I guess you could say. And you have the image in your mind. It gets in there the same way the words are getting in there, which you're not quite sure how that works, considering that you're mechanical and mushroom mm -hmm. people shouldn't be able to do this to mechanical creatures, but whatever. Right. Of... A significant number of these being sent from the moon, many of which have mushroom people in them, a significant number of them having other warforged. Wow. Huh. You're right. There be were here soon. a lot of. I. I'm guessing jurors isn't the right term here, considering. They refer to themselves as warforged. For or in? I don't understand the question. I believe that's an old Forged one. for war, war or forged in war? I mean, if you have one that's not... For, would that be a peace forged if there wasn't a war going on? Not in my case. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> the story they tell is somewhat convoluted and for beings of logic and reason, oddly self-contradicting. You would have to ask them. I will make a note of it. Okay. Are and they as as you're talking, a wagon being pulled by a couple horses is slowly approaching. Who's driving the wagon? A dragonborn. I am going off? to wave in a friendly manner. They oh, hey, a lizard person. <laughs> when they get closer, it, well, before they get close, you can tell that they are a gold-scaled dragonborn. Uh, they are wearing armor that, as they get closer, you can see it's, it is somewhat ornate, but... It's ornate in the way that it would mark them as someone in the battle who has the authority to give orders, but not so ornate that it's someone who really shouldn't be in the battle and the people giving orders would be saying, please, sir, could you get out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> no, really, we're glad you want to lead from the front. Respectfully, this isn't the front. The front's in that direction. <laughs> no, don't go that way. And also your tactical decisions are kind of... Sketchy. No. Yeah, divide sketchy. and conquer can be a good strategy. You're dividing us too much and sending us in all directions. That conquers the wrong conquers direction. <laughs> That's divide and get conquered. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, that does not seem to be the vibe that any of you get from this particular dragonborn. Um... And they appear to be very comfortable in their armor. They're not, like, trying to, you know, reach around and move something out of the way or anything. They're, they are used to this. Um, they get close enough to you that you can hear each other pretty well. And the Dragonborn says, Ah, you lived. Good. We're good at that. So far. So far, so good. And he slowly climbs down the side of the wagon, uh, pulling out a very large sword... Not unsheathing it, just it was sitting in the wagon, and he pulls it out. And as he walks towards you, um, he is very clearly using it as a cane. Aww. 
You could have stayed there. We'd come to you. Ah, but you are guests. It is a good idea for me to greet you. I'm glad to hear that we're guests and not intruders. Nice to meet you. Up there you were considered intruders, but here you can be guests. Hobby will bow. It's what you do. It's polite. Careful will also bow. He gives you a head nod. What might your name be, sir? The DM is checking his notes so he says it right. My name is Fenix Shamash Fax Norcruth Generalis Senior, but most people just call me Fenix Senior. You may do the same. Anyway, your chariot, such as it is, awaits. We should probably get going. I need to return it by sundown. It's a better chariot than the one that took five parachutes. Oh, this is the most advanced design. You should have seen the early models. I think I'm glad we didn't. (laughs) Okay. I'm assuming you all hop in. Uh Okay. Uh, The wagon is large enough and high enough that it's a bit of a climb for those of you who are a bit shorter. Um, A does a remarkable job scrabbling up the wheel. It only takes two tries. Boost. Give A a boost the first time. If you give A a boost the first time, A is able to get into the wagon a bit more than they expected to, and they do a somersault upon getting over the side. It, it was not a graceful go, somersault. Climb up after and go, sorry. No, it, it, it's okay, I guess. Right. Tex, can you fit in all right? I'll manage. Good. This wagon is normally used for firewood. It can support your frames no problem. It does sink down a little bit when you step in. Um, well, the two Warforge, at least, it sinks down when you step in. But it's more that the ground is going down a little bit under your weight than it is that the wagon has any trouble. And the horses um, are bred for pulling heavy loads in wagons. So they don't seem to have any difficulty getting the wagon moving again. Uh, all honesty, it doesn't look like Fennec Sr. is doing a lot to give directions to the horses. They seem to know the way on their own. Seeing Presumably. as we're a ragtag band of adventurers, and you're clearly someone with authority here, we should probably explain a bit about what we're doing. Oh, I already know. I had a long conversation with Monty on your way here. Ah, excellent. Ah. We did a little adventuring together back in the day. He had that air. He had a lot to say. He often does. Uh And then you have, apparently, a very quiet wagon ride (laughs) through the fields (laughs) as you all just, you know, have run out of small talk. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Small talk is, is difficult, and yeah. Well, while we have a moment of downtime, I should probably look through my book. Make sure you made notes in that. I make a lot of notes on that. You haven't really looked through your book since you went back in time, have you? No, I haven't. Yeah. um, You open up to your most recent page, and it's blank. Um, So it's the page before it. Yes. I mean, oh yeah, I should probably say, because they're (laughs) from the future. um, I have an e-reader of shadows. Yes, pretty much. It it is a dark (laughs) tome of forbidden knowledge. But it has a battery and an e-paper screen. I had an e-reader of shadows. Um, Do you need you know. to plug it in? Does it have to turn it off and on again? Yeah. Um, well, you can turn it off and on now again. It... it does not add content where the content is not. It does have indicators on the sides to say what page you're on, so you can check that. Uh, it does say that it's getting a signal. You never truly fully understood what it was trying to get a signal to, but it does say it's getting a signal. Um, oh, simply the, the, you know, health or something. But it's Another almost one. completely blank. The, the main content that's in there is like a, a little e-ink certificate that says congratulations on your pact. And the cantrips are gone. And the rituals are gone. And well, not all, all the notes. cantrips. There, there, there's some stuff there, but well, not everything is there. The cantrips I 
got when I got the E-Reader of Shadows. The ones I knew already are are reproduced in there, but there's a little manual about how to cast Eldritch Blast. Um, the manual is incredibly short because it, it's basically a flowchart that says, are you in combat? Yes. <laughs> Eldritch Blast. No. Eldritch Blast. And then it has a little arrow going over to yes. Careful. Did did you drop that some on something when we were going down in the... Did you fall on that? Well, I mean, we were getting knocked around a little, but getting knocked around a little should not do this. It's... Uh, uh, you seem to recall... Actually, no, give me an insight yeah. check. Give me an insight check. All the notes I took about people who don't exist anymore and won't... I mean, it has a backup, right? I'm trying to access the backup, and it doesn't seem to be um, accessing. Can I use my inspiration on that nat one? Uh, you certainly may. <laughs> at, at this point, uh, you, you're with a nat one, you'd be shaking it going, is there something rattling inside? Uh, there might be something rattling inside. <laughs> uh, with a 16, you realize that was actually a loose piece of something that fell off the side but it wasn't something it was something that shouldn't have been there in the first place um but the 16 you seem to recall a moment when my cat attacked my arm in the middle of the game that was um, hobby. <laughs> Sasha, I love you dearly. but it was moving <laughs> my arm was not moving that's part of the problem <laughs> i wasn't giving him pets well clearly your, i was supposed it's to. all your fault yeah i know right yes um yeah you seem to recall a time when in combat a while before the whole time travel thing, it actually got folded in half and continued to work afterwards. So the problem isn't damage. The the problem is me. I mean, Capo, I know that you cause problems on purpose, but well, no, I mean the okay, the problem isn't me. The problem is my contract. We do are have you, some lawyers in, on the island if you need to talk to somebody. Did you void your contract, Cavill? Is going back in time go against the pact? I could still cast spells. And some of... Uh, Eldritch Blast is not a bard spell. So I mean, I haven't actually... Test Eldritch cast Blast it. right now. No, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to test Eldritch Blast. Um, you are, in I fact, getting quite close to what appears to be an outer... No, 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 no I cast Hex. I cast Hex. My... I can cast warlock spells. I mean, not right now guessing? I can't cast warlock spells, but that's because I sat in the chair and it ate all uh, of your spells. Ha, 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 ha. Did it eat your, your, did it eat your book? I don't think that works that way. In fact, I'm proficient in arcana. I'm quite sure that doesn't work that way. It doesn't have anything in there that goes in, Either spell slots or packed spell slots. Fenix Senior halts the wagon and turns on the front bench to look at the party. This sounds like a conversation that either needs to be had before we're in the city proper or after you get to a location where there aren't going to be people listening to you talking about warlock pacts. I confess, as a paladin of Bahamut, I'm somewhat nervous in general, but what seems to be the problem? Their book is broken? Oh. Um, Cavill, is your patron broken? That's kind of what I'm wondering. Well, Did we, we break your patron? Um, us specifically, probably not. No, but we can deal with that later. It is possible that where I'm taking you okay. might have a warlock or two with the same patron, and you might even be able to discuss this with them to find out what's wrong. My knowledge on the subject of losing powers most resolves around how paladins might lose their abilities, and while there isn't a whole lot of carryover, I'm sure... Is it possible you've done anything recently to displease your patron? Well, due to time going all um, 
timey-wimey about things, there's a possibility he doesn't know me right now. Or yet. So that's probably the problem. We need and to make a long-distance call. I'm sure that I can sort things out if I take a rest and try to commune. Fenix mutters something not quite soft enough to be under his breath about hating time travel. <laughs> the player approves of this. The DM built the campaign around it, so the DM isn't saying the same thing. <laughs> of course not. And remember, all the players agreed to this <laughs> uh-huh. in mm-hmm. advance. Yep. Right. Well, you can probably find someone to have that discussion with you at Flag. Thank you, and I um, apologize for being uh, disturbing. There, um... I spent the better part of a decade living among kobolds. I understand disturbing. <laughs> Don't be mean to A. Oh, no. It's Dragonborn on this world spent most of the past thousand years living very insular lives. We only associated with other dragonborn. We didn't travel very far from our homeland. It's only within the past 15 years or so where that started to change. I had a lot of preconceived notions that I needed to get rid of. That's fair. Travel is very educational. It is. If my son hadn't left home, I probably wouldn't have had the reason to learn. And with that, he turns and signals to the horses that they should continue moving, and you head to the gate, which is wide open. There is someone posted there, but they seem to be more of a clerk than a guard, and they just sort of wave at Fenix. Fenix yells out how many people are in the cart, and they mark something off in a book, and Fenix takes the cart right on through. Useful. Easiest. And as you enter the city of Flotsam, the proper city of Flotsam, and not the, out- not the outskirts of it, um, you are in what apparently is in the market, the market district. I can speak. Yeah. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, it's I, my tea is empty and I need to replenish it when we take a break. Um, you are now in the market district and there's all kinds of shops about. Uh, there's a significant number of shops that are selling things that are quaint mechanical contraptions. Very quaint because, you know, why, why aren't they selling something that's much smaller that does like 15,000 times? But, oh, oh, we're thousands of years in the past. Oh. Historical objects. Everything is retro chic. Hmm? We've got retro chic. We've got cottage core. Uh, look at them. <laughs> Fenix Senior is doing his best to ignore you. It's kind of adorable. <laughs> Wise dragonborn. All right. Well, it's you go. Fascinating. Everything about this time period got completely lost. Well, mostly completely lost. What? What do you mean lost? It's it's been right here. Yes, but it won't be right here until it is right here because we're going to stop it from not being right here. Exactly. Mech a just stares at you. <laughs> All right. So you leave the market district and you pass a courtyard with a very large multi-story building, which is one of the larger buildings in the area, actually. Um, and on the front of the building, there is a large plaque that appears to be shaped like it's a scroll. But there's nothing on the scroll. The, sim- the symbol of Agma, god of knowledge. The ancient symbols. I must visit this place. They are keen on having visitors. The Agma Knights are one of the primary, I don't want to say government bodies, because things are a bit loose here in regards to that, but they are one of the leading forces in deciding what's to be done when things go south. They're probably our best option to talk to about the singing monolith, then. Yes, yes, let us go to their, to their, what is that structure called? Um, it's the thing they've been studying for a while that they probably don't want you to destroy, so you probably shouldn't bring that up with them. The singing monolith, they want to 
studied the singing monolith? They've been studying it for a few years now, yes. Oh. This isn't going to go well. Hmm. We're kind of trying to stop the singing monolith from being used to end the multiverse. Monty informed me, yes. (sighs) So you know how I said the Ogmanites are one of the main forces for deciding what to do when something goes bad? Yes. They're also one of the main reasons why something goes bad. Oh. I am going to look at our Ogmanite. Many directions. <laughs> we'll have to do our best to convince them that the singing monolith is bad. That is a route that you can take. Okay, and you continue on through. There is another large building you go past, which is number four on the map, for those of you who are looking at the map, uh, where it has a big sign out front that says Immigration and Housing Services closed. Why is that closed? Perhaps they have no more immigrants. Well, we still no do more occasionally. Houses. Perhaps they have no more houses. We still have some room for houses, but um, there was an incident. It appears you've had many incidents here. Or yes, one this one was not done incident. by Ogmanites. Ah. And you are then led through Heighton, which is basically um, houses that look like they are a bit more wealthy, a bit more posh, manicured lawns. You haven't seen lawns in the city until you got to Heighton. Um, wow. The grass is a monoculture. Weird. But in any case. That's really weird. Yeah. Where are the wildflowers for the pollinators? At this point, Fennec Sr. does mumble something under his breath. It does not sound flattering, but you don't pick up the words. It appears to be more directed <laughs> towards the aesthetics of this particular area than at you. And then you go through another gate to be outside the city again, because apparently it was easier to cut through the city than to go around it. And you are... That happens. Yeah, it, it's it's weird because you think there'd be a beltway, but no. Maybe, maybe there's traffic on the beltway. That that frequently happens. You want to avoid 95 during rush hour. <laughs> or just avoid 95. Just avoid 95. That's a good policy. Avoid 95. Doesn't matter where on the East Coast you are. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the houses you are, like, normally if you're outside a city, you expect to see the quality of the housing go down where things are sort of ramshackle and put together if you're thinking historical documentary stuff. But these houses aren't like that. Um, Most of them seem to be very well put together, if maybe a bit prefab, but each prefab house still seems to be a unique design. But you can still see, oh, how... All the parts of this house look like they were manufactured together in one run, and they put them together like Lego blocks. What are Lego blocks? I don't know. Fantasy okay. Legos. Fantasy and that Legos. house was made out of Duplo <laughs> blocks, and that house was made out of Mega blocks, but they were all made out of building materials that could be mass-produced. Until you get to one part of this area, which is referred to as Newton, or Newtown, where um, there is a considerable gap in the age of the houses. It's, even, even if a house is well put together, over time, unless you are cleaning the whole house every day, stuff starts to build up. A bit of grime and soot from smoke and fires from nearby chimneys, mold, mildew, stuff like that on the outside of the house. But these houses have a lot less of it. Like, they, they were built very recently. And towering above them is a structure that's a good 40 feet tall and appears to be made of marble. Um... Now, the marble certainly makes it seem fancier, but it's more like it's just a giant block of marble that was dropped on the ground here, and someone cut some windows and doors into it. And above That the front sure entrance, makes a statement. And above the front entrance, it says flag, and there's a period after each letter. Well, here we are, flag. It sure makes a statement. Yes, a statement is certainly what it makes. So is it a flag of truce, a flag of war, or a flag of a country, or...? It's the Flotsam Leftover Adventurers Guild, or flag. Ah, excellent! All right, then. What it are is they not the name I would have selected for it, but I was outvoted. <laughs> well, we are leftover adventurers. Probably because any other... <laughs> this is rather true. So, at this point, I think it's safe to say that we've been playing for about an hour. What do you say we take a short break, and then I take you inside for the tour? This sounds like a good idea. Visiting the litter box might be a good idea. TMI. Okay, press (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, 
as you are um, walking up the stairs, there's a, a handicap ramp over to the side, but which, which actually currently has someone having a wheelchair that is self-propelled take them up the ramp. You've never seen something that screamed the idea to you of combat wheelchair, but you've seen one now. Ooh. But, but you, the your group, is going up the stairs in the front, and uh, as you are going up the stairs, Fenix is saying, so naming acronyms aside, this is sort of a group project. Uh, a bunch of friends and myself formed a, a sort of support group for parents of ragtag adventurers. And that seems very useful. Yes. Not that many of our children still need our help at this point. Few of us have children that could easily defeat us if it came to that, but it's always good to look forward to the next generation. So uh -huh. there's a few establishments like this and Phoenix gestures at the building in front of you that are being built in the locations. This is the prototype. Incidentally, there's usually a registration process and a lot of forms to fill out. Most of the stuff that would need to be done was taken care of in part when Monty was asking you all of those questions on the moon. And this is a sentence that came out of my mouth. That is never uh -huh. going to stop being weird for me. The on the moon part? The on the moon part, yes. Specifically the on the moon part. I mean, it looked like it had trees and stuff. That's also not old. That's very new. Huh. Yes, we didn't have a forest moon. Congratulations on your Luna forming. That wasn't me. Oh. Well, congratulations on the Luna forming. Yes. I guess. There are some people who are upset about it, but if you look hard enough, you're always going to find someone who's upset about something. In any case, here, each of you should take the small pebble. All right. Okay, what is it for? I will treasure it forever, unless it explodes, at which point I'll throw it at someone else. If it explodes, blame the Ogmanites. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, it's their invention. Uh, they're a type of sending stone. What does it send? The same thing a sending stone sends, words. But ra rather Words. than having a sending stone that is only paired with one other sending stone, uh, these are a way for you to do group communication. One of you using a sending stone will send that information to everyone else with a matching sending stone. Oh, they're comm units. Yes. Useful. Small. I don't know what those are, but I will nod and agree. <laughs> Mech puts it into a little compartment on the front of her chest and figures that'll do. It will take you Copy a bit of time to attune to it, but once you have, it has some other properties that you will find, hopefully, very beneficial. Anyway. Hobby pretends to swallow hers, but does not. I'm going to make a roll for Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Should I make a sleight of hand roll? Phoenix doesn't even notice you doing it. That was a four on the die. Phoenix didn't see you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally did not occur. Uh, so, anyway, let's get on with the tour. Uh, for the record, maybe don't advertise that one of the founders is taking you on a tour. You might end up getting some treatment that you don't find to be beneficial. But, and Fenix goes through one of the large double doors in the front of the building, of which there's three, and leads you into something of a lobby where it's not unlike... When you go into a bank and you see a bunch of tellers in rows, um, on one side, you see some people who are almost certainly not adventurers, unless the standards to join are very low. And on the other side, you've got mostly just empty windows with some bored people wearing armor, sitting and drinking coffee or something. If you were registering like as normal, this is where you'd be doing it. Over here is where... Someone who has a quest that needs fulfilling might come and register to say, hey, here's this thing that needs doing. Could one of you do that? Mm. And if you'll follow Efficient. me. And as Fenix leads you down the lobby, you get into the large portion of the room that is mostly an open design. There's some very large marble pillars that are hopefully load-bearing 
Otherwise, you have some concerns about how well the ceiling is being held up. The ceiling is a good 30 feet up in the air. Um, so based on the height of the building itself, there's still something above that before you get to the roof. But over to the right of you is not a marble pillar. Maybe there's marble underneath, but it appears to have been covered in carpeting. And starting 10 feet up, there are structures that branch out from the main pillar that lead to carpet-covered circular platforms. Tabaxi tree! Hobby is climbing it. Zip! <laughs> um. There are other tabaxi that are up there already. Tabaxi tree! Clank, clank, clank. I'm assuming the rest of you will fill Hobby in when they're done. Yes. If they ever finish. I'll get her down eventually. We're fairly She's certain cat. that... Cat. She'll get bored. Have heard of this, yes. We're fairly certain Hobby, that what... there's one or two that haven't come down yet after about a week. I'm a little Hobby, concerned. Hobby, will that come down if Cavill calls? I, I... Hobby. Hobby. <laughs> That's Hobby gonna make Poppy look down at you like and that. not do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> with, with an expression, not actual words, but just an expression that says, "Would you look at how high I am?" <laughs> I am in fact quite high up off the air, dude. <laughs> no, no, no. It was Hobby that climbed the tree, not Chad. Not Chad. Okay. And. Fennec Senior understands your concern, but the one tabaxi that they're not quite sure has come down in the past week is a high-ranking spellcaster who has Mordenkind's Magnificent Mansion memorized. <laughs> so it's possible wow. that they're treating the, the tabaxi tree as just like their front porch. <laughs> it's Honestly, fair. <laughs> Does Hobby have an icon on Alba Rodeo? Um, um, I was just using the Pev icon, to be honest. Use the Pev icon. It's hilarious. I, I love it. There. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't see it. I, I just didn't see it either it. until it I, moved. Oh, okay. Yeah. You saw it move because I was adding it right then. I see. All right. I can't see it, but that's fine. I don't need to. Albert Rodeo is not behaving nicely for me. Whoa. <laughs> Hobby is the cat tree. <laughs> <laughs> because you can change the scale of things. Mm-hmm. All right. So wow, if Albert. you'll follow me, and Phoenix goes around the member services area um, okay. to some over there. There. Um, to a couple of doors along a hallway, well, not hallway, along a wall um, that have the word outgoing written above them. And as you're going past, there is a apparent group of adventurers that are loaded up and ready for travel with all their gear going through the door closes and there is a f flash of light from underneath the door and nothing else hmm. did they atomize them N no uh, while teleportation in and out of the city is mostly warded to keep it non-existent we did contract with the augmentites to have a bit of an exception uh anyone who happens to have one of these uh, <clears throat> flag stones, still hate the name, uh. is <laughs> able to contact member services to use one of the teleportation circles here to go to wherever your quest needs you to go. It's mostly accurate. That's well, better than walking up. Oh, certainly. And usually when they don't get the coordinates quite right, it's only a difference of a few inches to a few feet off the ground. Very rarely in the other direction. Oh. Well, they're working out the bugs. It's a prototype technology. And over here is where you might, if you have any particular gear that you need, be able to purchase some. Or if you have any excess gear, be able to sell it on consignment. And... Uh, this particular door that you're walking past now does have some very large plate glass windows with various items in the windows showing, uh, well, some of them look like just like, you know, backpacks with fancy designs, so like pockets everywhere or a very large sword that looks like it could cut your opponent no matter which way you were swinging it, even not in the person's direction. Actually, how would you hold it? 
Is that the hand? No, that's another blade. Okay, well, it's a thing. It's a thing. Okay, we're going to move on from that. Um, and there's all kinds of <coughs> shells and cabinets inside. There's people milling around. And also a gnome with a book in their hand with also... You know those flags they used to put on the back of bicycles? Mm-hmm. He's got one of those strapped to his back so you can see him from behind, behind counters. Oh. So when you receive payment for whatever quests you might choose to take, uh, the payment is sent directly to our member services. And you can withdraw it at any time, but you don't necessarily have to if you are shopping here because Quentin can actually take it directly from the deposit. And if you sell something here, it can go directly into the deposit. So you don't have to carry around like a backpack full of gold or something and ruin all of your stealth checks. Not that anyone in this particular campaign has ever had to do that in a previous campaign. It's okay. Ryan's stealth checks were ruined already. This is true. This is true. <laughs> but true, the backpack yes. full of gold didn't help. <laughs> no, it didn't. Yeah. There are some who are not as trusting and choose to carry their gold around with them constantly. And that's fine. But the option is available for you if you so choose. As we continue on this way, we have a staircase to the upper floors, which for the most part is guild apartments for various cohorts. Um, you as a group would be considered a cohort. As an example, uh, those are mostly reserved for cohorts that have reached a certain level of reputation, which, no offense, you have not yet. It's literally your first day. But should you so choose to continue living here when you get to that level and not, you know, seek lodgings elsewhere or leave entirely, that's the direction you could go in. Over here we have the showers. Before you ask, they are individual stalls. There is a thing you can sign out if it's the busy hour or if it's not. There's no waiting. You just go in and do whatever. Over here, we have the barracks. This is where you will be staying. What it lacks in privacy, it makes up for in economy of scale, I guess. Mm, okay. Being cheap. Phoenix opens the door and you see it's just rows of bunk beds. Oh, I've slept uh-huh. in much worse places than this. So uh-huh. have I. I don't sleep. Not exactly. We do have more than one Warforge that happens to be a member of the guild. And Fenix points over to a row near one of the walls that apparently has charging bays. Oh, they have those. I did not know. They're fairly new, but early in Flotsam's history, we gained a significant percentage of Warforged as our populace. So we've been adapting. Convenient. Useful. Yes. Ornamental. By the way, as you're walking past, um, these little circles you see on the map are tables, which I'm sure many of you figured that out already. Um, at the table you are closest to, which happens to also be the table that's closest to the showers, um, there is a group of, you're assuming adventurers, because everyone here is an adventurer apparently, or an employee, that are just covered in purple slime. Like, imagine yeah. it's there, but it's purple. And it's dripping off of them onto the floor. Do you need a hand with artifact. that? It's fine. We just need a long soak. The quest was to stop a wizard in their tower. Press the digitation. Nothing happens. Oh. We were my stopping a wizard in their tower. Now, this is one person talking to you. The rest of the people at the table just have this faraway expression of, I have seen things. I would like to not see things anymore. <laughs> Hobby is staying away from them. Apparently, it doesn't press to digitate off. Do it's not want on the it. fur. We do not want this on the fur. You would have to lick it off, and no one wants that. Unless it actually does taste like purple ketchup. No, no, you don't have enough hot dogs. Don't want to chance it. Might be toxic. You know, like the dye that she put on her tail tuft. Her tail tuft is slightly purple. I do not have any glass vials with me right now, and I'm therefore not going to try to collect the horrible goop to figure out what it is. But I am tempted. I want to register this with um, the DM. For the record, this is noted. (laughs) For the record, the DM is not making any attempt to let Chroma know that this goop exists. (laughs) 
<laughs> How much player appreciates this? Magic resistant goop. Think of all of the logical applications for such a thing that could be used in the future. Yeah. Chroma can't have any. <laughs> <laughs> and so once again, the world is saved. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to ignorance. Wait. <laughs> In this case, that actually still works. Okay. Moving forward. Literally. Um, and over here we have the bar and, well, Quest Hub. There. I don't know why they call it that. It, it's, it's not a wagon wheel. It, it's only slightly rounded, but whatever. It's a bar. And it is, in fact, a bar that seems to be entirely run by orcs. Uh, there's some that are older. There's some that are younger. Um, there is a sign that, as you can see, but I'm saying for the recording, except for when I hold the wrong button and I zoom out so far so that, I, that the whole map is a tiny little dot on my screen. That's nice. Glad I figured out how to do that. That's going to be useful at some point. The name of this particular bar is called the Quest Hub Bar and Grill, Mork and Mindy Proprietors. Apparently, Mork is an orc, but Mindy is also an orc. And they have a very large family, perhaps a very large extended family, um, that are going around and serving drinks and food to a variety of patrons. There's also um, a... How to describe this? It's a canvas that is rotating slowly around that brown portion in the middle of the of the Quest Hub map that has various plates of metal stuck to it that are different colors. There's ones that are green, one that are, ones that are yellow, ones that are red, and ones that are black. And each of these has something written on them. Some of them have little markers on them in addition to what's written on them. Some of them have a line crossed through them. So essentially... Because apparently it's tradition for adventurers to start off at a bar, it was decided we were going to have a bar. I was again outvoted. In this case, while you are having whatever refreshments you prefer, by the way, we're fresh out of Gear Grinder Special, before anyone asks, the last shipment exploded. Isn't that explosive? Apparently, Maybe it can also be used as a beverage if you water it down profusely. Huh, I've only heard of Gear Grinder cocktails. You know, you light them up and, well, you make sure that the fire doesn't get there before you've already thrown it. Fennec Sr. is staring at you with a look of horror that you have never seen on his face before. And you were talking about warlock packs earlier. Why would you put fire anywhere near Gear Grinder's special? Jurors. Jurors. Yes. Mean jurors. Jurors who have, have not seen the... Uh... Why would you put it near something you are holding filled with... That, that's a death sentence. Well, that's why you have a fuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where you're from, maybe you have more resilient fuses, but Gear Grinder has been known to dissolve them. Yeah, it's kind of tricky, but you've got to do it the right way. And most containers. Just... Yeah. Maybe ones like the stuff we were using was altered. Possibly. Well... It's possible there wasn't much of the stuff left, so you had to water it down a little before you... Possibly. It, <laughs> I wasn't there, so I don't know. But all I know is the stuff we have here, I wouldn't recommend trying what you have done. Um, well, while you're doing that, you can take a look at the quests that have been basically stuck to the wall here to see any if there's any that are interesting for you. As beginning members, uh, the ones that are most likely survivable for you, let's put it that way, would be the ones that are on the green plaques that are going around. Yellow is for more seasoned adventurers. Red is for more seasoned adventurers than that. And black is for most people we send to do this don't come back. And does anyone bother to look at the quests that are there while Fenix is saying this? Yes. Oh, certainly. Okay. I will do that too. Well, there, there's a few. I mean, we could spend a whole lot of time with me reading all of these, but I'm just going to read a couple of them for you. Like, there's a green one that's going by right now that says, uh, find and put to rest some wandering undead near the Crooked Hills. There's another one that says, um, end whatever Ogmanite experiment went horribly wrong this time. This one also says repeatable. Also, <laughs> next to repeatable, it says, unfortunately. 
<laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a yellow quest, by the way. Um, there's a red quest that says, Assist the Red Death of Plantain. Um, there's a black quest that says, Contain, Kill, or Otherwise Stop the Tarrasque, which you all would remember the Tarrasque because the Tarrasque was you know, consumed and repurposed with nanites to be used for um, planetary removal purposes hmm. by the jurors. Oh, right. so that's around right now. No one does that. Is this a Tarrasque that's been mech? No, it can't be. <laughs> And said there, that one out loud. There are multiple plaques of each of the colors I've mentioned that just say retrieve an item for Mo. Repeatable. <gasps> hey, Kevy! Grab one of those. Grab a green one. Yes. Yes what? Um. Mm. It looks familiar. Yeah. The quest looks familiar? Uh-huh. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. Can I set up a shrine? A small shrine. You know, about the size of a, a book. Well, in the barracks, each of you does have a footlocker in which you can place things. You could put the shrine in your footlocker. Well, I mean, can I take it out and put it on my footlocker, too, and, and put it back when I'm done? That would be wise. We do have cleaning services that come around, and if something is not contained in the footlocker, occasionally stuff will disappear. Well, that wouldn't be right. Well... I have to... I'm not saying that it's the cleaning services that take them purposely. They might decide that it's discarded and remove the waste. No, oh, no, it's it's just... Is there, you're a paladin. There are clearly other divine casters here. Is there a chapel in the building? In this particular building, there is not. There are several chapels throughout the city, however. Are there any to the twice-dead god? The what now? Uh, presumably it's, not. I'm then. not familiar with the term. Is it known by any other name? Well, a couple of them. I mean, twice. It's not ringing a bell right now. <sighs> That's all right. That's what prayer is for. Uh, at this point, um, another adventurer comes over and goes, Oh, wow! Fennec Sr.'s giving you a tour? Who did you kill? Hmm. No one you know. We're not supposed to talk about we it. Hope. Oh, man. Wow. I don't know what you did to actually get a tour from Phoenix Senior. I mean, usually the founders just hang out somewhere else. But that's, that's kind of cool. I mean, uh, could I, sir, could I, could I kind of have your autograph? Could I, I'm, I'm a big fan. And um, could I? Phoenix Senior looks at all of you with an expression that just says, help, I've been recognized. I don't like this. I don't want this. Please save me. I will go over and um, gently push this and, gentleman away. He is busy. And then the expression goes later. away, and he pulls out a pen, oh, and never mind. he signs a thing. Oh, wow, cool. You know, this is really neat. I'm I'm going to go. You were doing a thing. I'm sorry. I, bye. And as soon as they are out of earshot, Fennec Sr. lets out the, the largest, deepest sigh that you have heard in a very long time. I hate Does this place. happen to you often? No. I usually don't come here. Hmm. Why is... Usually it's one of the other founders. And he motions <laughs> towards the portraits that are hanging above the rotating canvas. Oh. The portraits I are would not like rotating. To look at the... I would like to look at the non-rotating portraits. Okay. It, it'd be funny if they were rotating, but just like clockwise or counterclockwise. <laughs> but no, there's not. Um, well, th there's a variety of images there. There's space for more. Uh, matter of fact, there's one painting that looks fairly recent of a not new at all, in fact, fairly ancient um, female dwarf. Um, and underneath it just has a, a gold plaque that says Granny. Oh. Um, <laughs> there's there's also portraits of some Kenku. It, it's a it's a portrait of a pair of Kenku. In the, in the same painting. Uh, Fennec Senior's portrait is there also, of course. Um, there's a pair of halflings, and the caption for them is Jupiter and Carpo Wanderwind. Uh, Jupiter is in the forefront. Carpo is behind Jupiter, and for all intents and purposes, is epitomizing the, the concept of yes, dear. <laughs> 
uh, it's a portrait. You shouldn't be able to tell he is the epitome of yesteryear in a still painting. But somehow the painter managed to capture that look. Either the painter is incredibly skilled or they had a reference. <laughs> uh, there's several humans. Um, Perez a Perez. Um, there's um, two people whose last name are Silvor in a portrait by them. I'm sorry. No, what, what, there's um, one person that is named Kara Silvor. Uh, there is a pair of women. One of them looks to be a half-elf. They're, wearing, they're both wearing monk robes. Um, Bel- Asus and uh, Belkis Umarin. Um, there's another group portrait, Annabelle and William Jones. There's a portrait of a Warforge where it just says Cog Bucket underneath. There's Monty. You, Monty looks incredibly smug. It is, and your first thoughts when you see this that come unbidden are, if there's any kind of hero worship that's happening here for the founders, Monty probably comes down here frequently and just lives it up. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite possible. With that expression on his face in that painting, there, that is the first thought that comes to you, and you're probably not wrong so far as you know. Um... There's one painting of a, an older woman where it doesn't list her first name, but uh, the plaque underneath her name says the Vicontessa Ravenscroft. Wait, there is a name there for that or no? There's no first name. It just says Vicontessa uh, Ravenscroft. Uh, so it gives her title, but it doesn't give her first name. Brown um, will definitely kind of arch an eyebrow at that one. Uh, you have her nose. You should probably put it back. Yeah. <laughs> Please do not deface the paintings. I won't deface my nose either. Yeah, it's you didn't deface it. You just took the nose. The rest of the face is still good. <laughs> Jokes that I learned from having a one-year-old nephew. Um, <laughs> and there is a painting of a tiefling. No last name is on there. The plaque just says Mo. Hobby is going to sibling punch Cavill in the for, in the upper arm. Huh. Maybe it's under his couch. The data sticks. That would be something. I'm clearly missing something. <laughs> it's okay. You don't need it. That I just shared the actual portrait that you see of Mo. <laughs> nice oh. one. Oh. <laughs> Reese does the best portraits. Mm-hmm. I need to commission a Reese portrait of Monty. I need to do that. Yes. Yes. And we are once again talking about things listeners cannot see. <laughs> <sighs> well, if they go to Aaron B. Smith slash Cogwheel, this portrait has been put on there too. Mm-hmm. Well then, wait. You could probably put on the patron. Um. So while I was stalling, I was rolling an inside check for Fenix, and he looks at the, up at the portrait of Mo, and then he looks over at Cavill, and he looks at the portrait, looks at Cavill, he looks at the portrait, looks. Wait, your patron. Who's your patron? Mm-hmm. Are we supposed to talk about patrons here? Fenix sort of half gestures towards an adventuring party that's a good 50 feet away from you, where one of them has bat wings and is also partially on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the fire is almost certainly for the aesthetic. It is causing some havoc with their ability to drink their beverage of choice, however. <laughs> they keep having to blow it out. Mm. Just want to make sure that we weren't going to get in trouble. Anyway, answer the question. Well, yes, I believe that's him. I have... Your patron no, is Mo. A version of him from thousands of years. And Mo the tiefling bard who helped finance this building we're in right now. I mean, a lot of people were. Fennec Sr., who, except for that brief moment where he was like, help me, I don't like the situation, has been very, like, upright and polite. I assume he's not Is been... laughing. <laughs> is laughing very hard. He is leaning heavily on his cane and then falls to the ground right on his butt and he's just lifting his head to the sky, well the ceiling, and laughing and laughing and so laughing. I'm... There are tears rolling down his face. He's laughing so hard. So I assume I'm not going to meet any um, other warlocks of him. 
Am I? No. No. I don't believe you will. Oh. Oh, there is there is backstory ball. here. There is, but that's a... Uh, you know, I think... I think what I need to do is I think I need to facilitate, and I can't believe I'm saying this as a paladin of Fahamut. I think I need to help you meet your patron. And Thank the only you. thing I ask in return is that I get to be there when it happens. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, it hurt, right? Right. Fennec Sr. starts laughing again. <laughs> this sounds like an excellent reason to agree. And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for playing. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I've been joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Beth, Ellie, Eo, Jen, and Matt. Is there anything that anyone would like to plug? Eo's mom writes books at elizabeth-mccoy.com. Or, you know, you can get them at, like, Apple Books and Nook and Kobo. And you can actually ask your library for them, too. So... You know, they might have to buy it, but they're real cheap for a library. My brother-in-law writes books. You can find them at nogodsbeforeus.com. There's also a book, of, book Jen. of Jen. Yes. <laughs> so my website is Book of Jen, and it actually has book reviews at the top of it now. It has for quite some time. And oh, cool. it's got a wide variety of things, including a lot of stuff from uh, the Diablo series of games and whatever else I end up playing. And I'm also the host of the Shattered Soulstone podcast, which focuses on the Diablo series of games and everything related to them, including stuff created by the community. And that's at ShatteredSoulstone.com, and a new episode goes up every Saturday. And we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Gaming. Help us keep the lights on, along with other illustrious patrons, including Chris, Ellie, Eric, Janadalok, Mickey, Shanshan, and Walter. And also patron emeritus, Cindy. And until next time, this is Crash saying... Mo, I, I need you to do a consultation. Yeah, uh, how quickly can you get here? Yeah, I, I understand. I, I, I understand that you are spending some time with family. I guess that. So let's finish that up. But this, you could argue, this is also a family matter. No, I can't explain more over, over ascending stone. D- just get here when you can. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.